So welcome to today's event, another event for the Green Month uh, this April, uh, with title How We Can Improve Our Mental Well-Being. I'm very honored that we have our first speaker today with us, Greta Rossi, a change maker involved in multiple non-for-profit uh, initiatives. And I'm especially very glad that we have her today with us because I have met her before and I had her as facilitator in my own journeys as a participant in Climate Kick uh, last summer in Change Maker Exchange uh, this March. And I'm very grateful for uh, her presence today and also her contribution uh, in, in these activities that I mentioned because she's responsible for uh, the methodologies and the skills that we are using during this Green Month to facilitate this program uh, and make it as much more interactive and fun for you. And I'm, I'm very happy that she's here with us today and she will be with us tomorrow as well and talk about mental well-being. And Greta, over to you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina, and good afternoon to everyone. I see that, yes, Katya has also connected with the audio. Great. Uh, thank you for the beautiful intro. Definitely don't deserve it, um, but I'm very happy to be spending the next uh, few minutes with you. I'm calling in from rural Italy. We just had a massive storm, so like the weather feels a bit, I don't know, a bit rocky, but I'm hoping that we can ground ourselves for the next uh, half an hour or so. Um, as Katerina said, I'm a facilitator mostly for change makers, and today I'm representing Recipes for Wellbeing, which is a not-for-profit association. We're based in Switzerland, and our mission is to support change makers to avoid burnout so they actually they can thrive and carry out with the, you know, their work. So we do this in a variety of ways. Uh, of course, this year and last year, mostly online. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, but I'm happy to be uh, with you all today. Um, and also I'll share this right away because I know it might be useful. Um, we have a collection of 170 freely accessible what we call recipes for well-being. So these are activities to boost the individual and team well-being. So you can find uh, the link in the chat in case at any point you need a bit of support for your well-being. So to kick off our exploration today, I actually thought that we could do a quick check-in practice. And a check-in practice allows us to fully arrive in the conversation because I'm aware that maybe we're doing something else just before logging in. And maybe your mind is still distracted. Maybe you're still, you know, worrying about something else. So this is a chance for, for us to arrive. And of course, because this is Green Month, I thought of doing a nature-inspired check-in practice. So to help us um, ground ourselves. So for this, um, you don't need to see me. So you can also turn your webcams off if you want for the next few minutes. So you can just be by yourself. I will also share, um, turn my camera off so you don't get distracted. And I'll just put an image as a um, uh, kind of as a banner there. So what we're going to do is uh, a five elements meditation. And this is a really beautiful practice to help us arrive into today's meeting. So I invite you to find a comfortable seat. Keep your back straight. Yeah, relax. You don't want to be rigid. You can have the feet on the floor and the hands resting on your lap or legs. And there's nothing you need to see at the moment. You just need to be able to hear my voice. And if it feels right for you today, I actually invite you to close your eyes. If not, you can simply lower your gaze so you don't get distracted by your screen. And this is a nature inspired meditation. Um, and we'll start with the element of earth. So the earth breath means that we try to breathe in through the nose and we breathe out also through the nose. And we'll do this in your own rhythm for a total of five times. And as you breathe in and out through the nose, I invite you to also visualize the color gold. Now we move to the water breath. This time I ask you to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Always for a total of five times and visualizing the color green. So 
So water breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And we continue with a fire breath. This time I would like you to breathe in through the mouth and out through the nose. Again for a total of five times, visualizing the color red. In through the mouth and out through the nose. Fire breath. We now move to the air breath. Please breathe in through the mouth and out through the mouth. Always for a total of five times in your own rhythm, visualizing the color blue. So in and out through the mouth. And last, we move to ether, the fifth element. Please breathe in and out through the nose. But this is a more refined breath compared to the first time. It's more subtle. Again, for a total of five times, visualizing the color gray or imagining transparency. This is ether breath in and out through the nose, very subtle, very refined. And now you can return to your natural breath Feeling in yourself the balance and integration of earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Recognizing your embodiment as a microcosm of a cosm in which all is contained. Now bring the attention back to your body, sitting on the chair. Again, feel the contact between your feet and the ground. And whenever you're ready, you can gently open your eyes or lift up your gaze. And if you feel comfortable, I also invite you to turn your webcam on so I can see you. It's always nicer to see people. And welcome back. Welcome as well to those who joined us uh, in the middle of this uh, mindfulness practice. I hope you feel a little bit more grounded with yourself and with each other. Now for the next eight to 10 minutes, I'll share a little bit of input, a uh, few concepts, and then we have time for a Q&A. And in particular, I wanted to talk about uh, mental health and mental well-being in the context of the pandemic and in the context of the digital world, which we seem to be so uh, trapped in. Um, so it is now 18 months, uh, more or less, into this pandemic, and it is clear that, of course, the pandemic has had massive repercussions on the health system in our countries, on the economies, but also on our mental health and mental well-being. And this is something that we don't yet talk so much about it. Um, and if you think about the human species, the human species is extremely social. We crave connection. We crave love and affection, yet we have been forced to isolate ourselves, sometimes even from our own families. So we've been left without 
this, uh, this connection and this love. Also, we are very curious and adventurous species. We like to experiment, to try new stuff, to go on adventures. And again, we've been confined to our homes without the possibilities uh, of going out, of exploring, of traveling. So that also has had an impact on our mental well-being. And lastly, if you think about it, we are hardworking species. We like as well to commit to something, to learn. And many of us have been unable to continue our studies or it's been moved to online and online uh, has been a little bit difficult. Many, some people haven't been able to go to work or haven't been able to reach their beneficiaries. So it's also been difficult on that side because studying or working very often defines a lot of you know, who we are and what we do. So in all of this, in, in this context, many people have found a solution or at least a support in technology, right? So if you think about it, digital technologies have allowed us to connect to other people, to our loved ones, to friends. They've also allowed us in a way to travel around the world through the screen. And they've allowed us to reinvent our studies and our work so that we can do that from home. So in this global pandemic, digital technologies have played a massive role. They've actually helped us not just to thrive, but even so, uh, to not only to survive, but even to thrive. So we see that they've been really important. This, of course, if we're privileged enough to have access to a good internet uh, connection and to digital means, of course, to digital devices. And at the same time, technology is also a double-edged sword, right? So it is clear to me that in the past 18 months, our addiction, to digital technologies have got, has gotten even worse, with also many consequences on our uh, on our mental well being. Now think about the constant notification on uh, updates on you know COVID numbers in your countries and waiting to hear from a family member if they test a negative or all of a sudden your professor changing plans for your studies or you know friends really struggling and not not reaching out to you even through digital means. So. It's been quite difficult for, for many people. And this culture of always being connected, uh, always feeling that there's something urgent that we have to respond to, you know, there, there might be something that is coming to my phone and I need to be there, um, actually has really uh, decreased um, people's well being, uh, especially when it comes to mental health. And in a way, it's to, if we look at the brain, one of the clear signals that we see this is the, the idea of multitasking. So we think that, you know, all of a sudden we can do so much just with a device, which makes us super effective, super efficient with our time. But multitasking actually is a little bit of a myth because our brain can focus on one thing and one only at one time. So right now, perhaps let's take this as an example, you are listening to me and perhaps you are replying to that WhatsApp message or you're checking your emails or you're thinking, what should I cook for a meal tonight? And you think that you can do all of this at the same time. And you can, don't get me wrong, but you can't do this devoting 100% of your attention to each task. And what we're doing is that we keep scattering our focus we're switching from task to task. And what this does to our brain is that it takes up an enormous amount of energy. There's actually research, there is a beautiful article in the Harvard Business Review from last year that says that kind of this switching, you know, that we're doing all the time costs us up to 40% in productive time. So now imagine if I give you 40% of your time back, that's, that's quite a lot in a day, right? So my invitation is, if you are multitasking right now, maybe close the tabs, you know, turn off the notifications so you can be really focused and really present with this, uh, with this conversation we're having and to really invest in your mental well-being. Now, mental well-being is really different for each of us. And also when I talk about mental well-being, doesn't mean that we always have to be happy and feeling strong and we don't experience sadness or upset. It's not that. Actually, it's about being able to integrate all the thoughts that we have, the good ones, the bad ones, the difficult ones, the really joyful ones, and all the emotions, and to hold them without feeling that we're being overwhelmed, right? So you might recognize sometimes the negative thought pattern that we go down to, that spiral that then doesn't help us. So it's not to say that we don't experience these difficult thoughts, but it's being able to hold them and to hold them gracefully in a way that doesn't... Um, 
distract us. So I'm going to share in the chat a few links to things that might help you uh, to support your well-being. So the first one is actually a blog post on three ingredients for a healthy digital diet. So really looking at mental health and digital well-being. So there's, there, there are a few tips there. Also, if you're struggling to be with multitasking, there is another blog post there with a few ideas. And also in the time of COVID, we have a few different recipes or activities that can support your mental, but also your physical, emotional, spiritual well-being um, if you're struggling with this. And the last link I wanted to share before we actually open up to, to you to see what you want to talk about is the link to the five elements meditation that we did. So in case you want to repeat it, you have it there so you can do it with your teams, with your friends, with your um, fellow classmates. Um, and I think I'll pause here because I really want to see if you have any questions or anything that you would like to, to dive a little bit deeper in for the next 10 minutes or so. And I think, you know, you can either write in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and speak. Um, it's also uh, fine. Vina, of course, nice to hear your voice. I can start by breaking the ice uh, on that. And thank you very much, Greta, for, for that presentation. Uh, talk about the topic that, especially in Estonia, we avoid quite a lot to talk about the mental well-being and how we are and especially when we are in distance and not in everyday life as we were used to, to live before. Um, I am one of the people who are actually multitasking quite a lot. And in the last, I could say nine months, I have tried to reduce it as much as possible because it brings me so, this scattering between the different activities makes me so tired afterwards that in the beginning I was like, okay, it doesn't happen to me, it happens to others because they don't know how to do it. And I'm the expert, I know how to. And then uh, when I finish what I'm doing, I feel so uh, drained regarding my energy levels and also for instance if i check my uh, my emails i don't remember why i enter there and what i was searching it's like this thing that you go to the kitchen and you're like why i came here um but you cannot in the kitchen you can look let's say and remember but there are so many tabs in my computer. There are so many things that I do. And I don't remember where I started or where I want to end up. And I end up to take a break because I don't remember what I was doing. It's, uh, I think it's a little bit more than 40% of energy that I went back. And it's quite difficult to, to deal with that. But I guess there are quite a lot of nice tips. And once you actually accept that and realize it, then it's the first step for a solution. Yeah, absolutely. And Katarina, thank you for sharing that and for your openness. And I think, you know, what you're describing is that idea that we live our lives in autopilot. We go through the emotions, you know, sometimes, you know, we just travel from one place to the other and we, we even don't realize that we were driving and we got to that place. They're like, gosh, was I on the road? You know, I didn't even realize. And that's sometimes how we move through life, right? Just one thing after the other. And we kind of, we kind of blurs. I mean, for many people, the past 18 months have been a blur, right? It's like now end of April, 2021. It's been 18 months in this pandemic. Can people distinguish what happened last month to six months ago to one year ago? It's very difficult. So the first step actually, and that's why it's also connected to the practice we did and to the topic is self-awareness. So practices uh, like mindfulness meditation help you to become aware. By centering on your breath, on what is around you, you all of a sudden are able to see, to sense. And once you have that awareness, you're like, okay, do I want to continue down this road of multitasking? And if you can also say yes, but you're making a conscious choice rather than letting it happen to you. Or you can say, actually, this is not good for me. So I stop and I try to do something else. So self-awareness is actually the first step. And also the other thing I think is important to mention and you find that in the, in the first blog post that I shared is the idea of appreciation. It's so easy to be so hard on ourselves, right? We're like, oh, dang, I'm procrastinating. I'm scrolling down Instagram feed or, you know, I'm not doing that and doing something else. And we beat ourselves up. We're very, you know, negative and, and harsh. It's also important to appreciate that it's a journey. And we can take tiny steps and to appreciate also the moments where we're like, okay, you know what? 
that was a hiccup. I made a mistake. I multitask again, or I got distracted. That's okay. It's like training a muscle, right? Mindfulness, it's not about the absence of thoughts or emotions, it's actually becoming aware and to realize every time we get distracted, to bring the attention back to the focus, you know, could be the breath, the body, whatever we're focusing our meditation on. So these are a couple of tips that can, that can help. Thank you very much. I saw a camera turning on. So ah, now I see the microphone as well. <laughs> Hello, Manuela. <laughs> Hi, um, I just wanted to say something on that topic of just uh, like kind of pausing ourselves and paying attention to the moment. Uh, for me, it has happened the other way around. I felt like um, this happened to me during the Corona situation that it kind of like Corona helped me because um, before Corona happened, I had all these, let's say, distractions kind of all the time, like a lot of uh, socializing, many people around, a lot of things to do during the day, uh, traveling and organizing stuff all the time and doing so many things. And I didn't have, a pri I haven't prioritized well, uh, let's say, my time. And I was feeling like sometimes I was thinking even the whole week, a whole month has passed by and I couldn't remember a thing. I was feeling like it was like a robot mode, let's say, exactly what you said. And um, now when Corona happened, because all these things went away, uh, like... I was forced not to do them, not that I, I, I chose it. Then I felt like I had time to relax and just be in the moment and I had time to just think and have quiet moments and, and free time. And I was thinking that kind of learned a lesson like through that and now I can, I'm going to try and when normal life is back, I will try and just slow down and just have some moments that I really slow down and I focus on what I'm doing at the moment. I'm not like doing things like a robot and then I don't remember anything. It's uh, just it's super scary for me that uh, I experienced that. So it really, really has helped. So it can have kind of also positive uh, effect maybe to some people depending on, on how is your life. So. Absolutely. I think you're right. I mean, COVID was such a disruption in our lives that it's also forced us to reassess our priorities. Um, to realize how much we actually maybe crave nature because it's been taken away from us. So that's what many people actually found that or really what are the relationships that are important. Many people got, got rid of like stuff that was like, you know, they declutter. So I think Manuela, you're right. You know, any, let's say disruptor is also an opportunity for change. And I think my hope is that once we will return to some sort of normality, however you want to define this normality, is that we'll actually want to go back to how it was before because it wasn't healthy, it wasn't sustainable. And I hope that we can really bring some of the lessons that you said, that you've learned from this experience so we can actually improve our relationship with ourselves, first and foremost, but also with other people and with the planet. Because also I think it's, uh, it's COVID, it shows us how sometimes separated and um, yeah, alienated we are from the rest of the natural world. So it's an opportunity to reclaim and to rekindle the more uh, harmonious connection. And I think maybe we have time for one more question uh, or comment as well, just a remark, observation. I mean, I just got to thinking to what Katarina said about starting to do something and then forgetting why you're even doing it. And I just kept thinking, does it happen because I'm getting older? Should I be freaking out because, um, you know, maybe like my grandmother had dementia, so maybe it's an early sign, you know, I'm just like driving myself crazy with that. So it, it feels great that somebody else has that going on because it, it's scaring me. <laughs> No, you are right. And of course, I mean, there are different uh, mental ill health and mental, you know, uh, illnesses and disorders, which, you know, we don't want to discount for that. But I think we, we do live in a society that is requiring us to be 24 seven hooked, ready to do involved in a million one things. If you're if you're not involved in like 15 different projects, it's kind of like, you know, and who are you and what are you doing? So I think all of that is actually the society that's driving it. And it's uh, it's very common. So you're definitely not the only one experiencing that. Uh, it's just that we don't talk about it, you know, the myth of busyness, of sounding busy, of going from meeting to meeting or from Zoom call to Zoom call. And it's like, are you actually taking the time? So a small tip is 
I try to set my calls. If it is a half an hour call, I actually send a calendar invite for 25 minutes. If it is a one hour call, I send it for 50 minutes. So I always make sure that in between calls, I have at least five minutes or 10 minutes where I can just breathe, regroup, close that conversation so I can open another one rather than like going into the next conversation still with stuff from the previous one. So things like this can really help you. Um, yeah, and you're definitely not alone, Kristen. So thank you for sharing. Can I have one more comment, please? Yes, go ahead, Manuela. We have time, I'm not sure. Uh, very quickly, just wanted to say that I recently uh, had a new job, like I moved last year to my new position, and uh, it surprises me exactly what you said, that there is a misconception of how good multitasking is, and uh, they have this multitasking like a good thing that an employee should have many times in many companies. And every time uh, I go to a new position or this time I was just saying to my boss, my supervisor, that I don't have this thing. I, I cannot multitask. I'm always prior doing one thing at a time. For me, there's no, I cannot do multitasking. And he was always laughing. He's like, oh, I can do it very well. And there sometimes I think our environment also has this I idea that is passing on to us that multitasking is kind of a good thing to have. But then I noticed that um, people who say they're doing that they end up doing half uh, half job in every task uh, and i have noticed or they're not really uh, doing as you said 100 percent and their then mistakes uh, occur or they don't pay attention like during a meeting they're doing a job in the same time and they end up not listening to the meeting and, and having mistakes to the job they're doing or something like this and um there's also a misconception in professional level about this multitasking thing I just wanted to mention it because it's really yeah. always always confused me a bit why uh, it's a good thing uh, to, to have this. I think you're right. And I have to say, you know, I have to admit a few years ago, I would say like, I'm a great multitasker, you know? Uh, and I didn't know that actually what it was doing to my brain. It was only when I started to really do more research into the neuropsychology of the brain and what happens, I was like, okay, I can do it. I think I can do it, you know, well, you know, again, I'm assuming. But what are the costs? What are the implications? Um, and you're right, you know, you actually can't um, focus on all these things with the same quality of presence and attention. And, um, and if you think about, you know, high performing athletes, what they do is actually they enter what is called flow state. Right. And that's when you can be at your peak and highest performance. And it's very different from acrimony. You're just involved in one activity. You enter this kind of like space where everything else blurs and you're not aware because it's just that one thing and that's when you can really be at your best self now it doesn't mean that we, we we can be in that flow state for the entire you know day of course not but it's important we make space for this flow state deep thinking time otherwise how do we tap into our creativity how do we tap into our wisdom how do we absorb and reflect and not just be kind of like hamsters on the wheel keep running running but you're running nowhere so I think it's a very important observation. I think it's about us as well, speaking about it in the workplace and be like, okay, maybe we had this idea of multitasking was good. What if that's not true? What, what else is there? And by inviting that conversation, you open up possibilities for something else and then for change to happen. So maybe it's a task for you as well or a challenge, Manuela, that I'm like, you know, uh, sharing. <laughs> and, and then you can tell me how it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I would like to add also something that uh, we were talking about this, as you said, the, the hamster inside the role, or we are running, or we we forget to, to be present in the moments. And uh, many times I was thinking, okay, if the things that I'm doing now, I had to do them 20 years ago, how much time it actually would take me to set up calls, to set up meetings, to write uh, without the computer and had to write everything uh, in handwritten and so on. This would take me so much more time. And this was one of the reasons that things were more slowed down. And now we have optimized that, but we don't see the relevance of technology that has allowed us to do this. But this doesn't mean that all our days should be devoted to just being productive and optimize all these processes. But as before, I had, I don't know, like if I had to meet you, I had to come to Italy or you had to come here and I had to spend, for instance, two days traveling. Um, 
I need this two days. I need to change the place. I need to do different things. It's not just, okay, because we can do this Zoom, then in two minutes I can jump up in the next Zoom. It needs some time. Yes. And since I start thinking about this, I'm trying to get a little bit more breaks or be grateful that I have this possibility now, but this is not the real world, let's say. Absolutely. And again, just going back to the travel metaphor, right? Before it would take time to travel from one place to another. Even now, like in this day and age where we travel so fast, you would still, let's say, jump on a train or a bus or a train or whatever, a boat, and it still takes you time to reach a destination. Now with Zoom, it's like, or in all these online meeting platforms, it takes a few seconds. And that's why what we did at the beginning, which is the practice of checking in, just giving this space for people to arrive because we don't know where people are traveling from metaphorically. And so you're giving them the space to just be like, okay, where am I? Am I ready to enter? And how do I want to show up? And so actually the same way you have the check-in, it's also good to have the check-out. And so now, because I know that uh, Katrina, you will take over in just a moment, I invite us to check out for this session to go back to what you were saying, Katrina, the here and the now. So I invite you to just take a few seconds to check in with yourself. What is present in your body? What is it that you feel and you're experiencing? And I invite you to maybe write down a keyword or a sentence in the chat. Um, don't hit enter. So we all uh, check out at the same time. So just take a moment. What is present in your body in this moment? Type in the chat. Don't hit enter until, until I tell you so. And then at the count of three, I invite you to hit enter. One, two, three, go. Okay, so we have calm, excitement, trembling, more grounded, ate too much. Yes, so coming back to what is present. And we realize that this asking this, you know, what is present with me in this moment will bring us back to the here and the now so that we can then go on with whatever task we have to do. So I think with this, uh, thank you for your uh, presence. As you know, tomorrow we have actually a one hour workshop on mental well-being. So if you want to experience more practices, we definitely invite you to, to join and uh, back to you, uh, Katarina. Thank you very much, Greta, and I'm looking forward for tomorrow's event as well. It was a pleasure to have you with us, and actually you gave me a lot of nice uh, bridges for my presentation and my topic. Uh, so see you tomorrow and continue your day mindfully. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, hopefully you cannot see all of the stuff that I have opened there <laughs> because there are many but it is okay I guess you can see it and we have oops to start from the previous one so bear with me one second perfect I guess you can all see the presentation and thank you also from being here and being present and be asking with us with uh, uh, with Greta and have this amazing check-in uh, our topics are a little bit connected because we're going to talk about mindfulness as well, but this time I will not talk as a uh, Green Month organizer, uh, neither as a student at Tallinn University, but more as a founder of Bean Free. Uh, Bean Free is a social enterprise that I have founded uh, one year ago in Tallinn, in Estonia. And what we do is that we offer recycling services for uh, households, uh, bars and restaurants and companies uh, and in order to create and initiate the spillover of behavioral changes towards sustainability. And uh, our mission basically is to encourage people to act and be responsible for their lives with the minimum effort required to have greater results and to achieve a better quality of life for themselves and the environment around them. We will not get into the sustainable development goals at this point. We have discussed them throughout the Green Month. I just put it here to know what we actually address and why we are doing this is mostly to help people from the level that they are at the moment to make the next step 
and make a next step that it will not demotivate you, but it will actually inspire you to do more. And today we will uh, discuss the topic about mental well-being and personal development and environment. And specifically um, in May, uh, we're going to launch the first online course through Being Free uh, with titled Personal Development Through Sustainable Living. As you see in the picture is a person al alone in the mountains coming and connect with nature, but we can connect in nature and with ourselves in different ways because we affect the environment and we are part of the environment but also the environment is part of us. We tend to forget living in the industrialized societies and living in the city centers and in cities that we are something different from all the other ecosystem, but we actually are made from the same elements. It's just we are socialized and organize our civilization a little bit different. So today we're gonna discuss and see how we can develop ourselves by embracing a sustainable way of living. And with sustainable way of living, we, we mentioned also throughout the workshops uh, and all the activities from Green Bond that there are different aspects towards sustainability. And we embrace it quite, uh, we, we can find different ways to define it. We can find different ways to take action, but I would leave that a little bit later to discuss about. And I will not give you hints about what sustainability is for, for us or for me, because it's different for each one of us. So here I will follow the structure of uh, uh, Greta and I will invite you again to reflect uh, to, to some uh, prompts. I would like you to close your eyes and I will read these statements that you see on the screen. And I would like you to be present and hear uh, what your thoughts are what your sensations are and what your feelings are when you hear these specific prompts. Ready? Manuel, I see eyes are closed. Kristen, <laughs> um, yeah. the rest, please close your eyes. I want to be rich. My options are unlimited. I deserve the best. I need to be strong. I need to be competitive. I need to hide my emotions. I cannot do anything alone to change the world. It is vain to even try. When I will have money, I will be happy. When I will have a job, I will be happy. I feel depressed. I will go for shopping to feel better. I have panic attacks. I need to use the right opportunities to succeed in life. I will invite you to open your eyes. And I would like to hear maybe from two people, how did you feel when you hear that uh, prompt and how if and how many times you have said this prompt to yourself or to a person that is seeking help or advice from you to your child or your brothers or si your siblings your brothers or sisters or you have heard somebody else to say these things to each other how do these prompts make you feel You can either unmute or write in the chat. I mean, um, I started thinking about uh, depression and how many of my friends I feel like the majority of my friends at some point tell me that uh, they're experiencing that. Um, and I, I think I have been lucky that I haven't really had a, a, at least not a very bad or serious case of that. But uh, 
but it's something that I find so hard to understand at times. And I feel really helpless when I see a lot of people around me in that situation. And I just genuinely feel like I just don't know what to do other than I'll just listen and try to be there. But that just makes me feel helpless completely. So that's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Thank you very much, Kristen, for sharing this. And I can understand and totally feel what you're describing, that it's a situation that actually you feel that your your hands are tight, your heart is tight, and you can actually cannot offer anything, neither to the others or to yourself if you're actually um, uh, experiencing that. Uh, I would like to hear from one more person and then share my thoughts <laughs> about that. I think for me and my relatives and friends, uh, the money money topic is one of the most uh, common ones we talk about. Always like discuss, discussing how to be rich and how to have more money. And uh, I try to always uh, think that money is not the, the most important thing in life. But then again, I remember how my sister once said, that uh, uh, I'm so angry that everything is uh, connected to money. Like if you want to have a trip or, uh, I mean, always there are ways to uh, have those uh, ways uh, cheaper, but always it uh, involves money. So it's really like, uh, it makes me angry. <laughs> Thank you very much for being honest and share your thoughts and how and your feelings about that and it can definitely make you feel angry like that everything is about money 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 and i was uh, when i was preparing the presentation it was like katarina don't go so much into the uh sociology and the social sciences but i cannot avoid that and i will not avoid this so i would like to open a little bit this discussion and this frustration this anger or this feeling of helplessness is very much related of how our society is constructed and what is currently the the pattern uh, and the way that um we are interacting with each other, which is the greatest value that we have. We're living in one capitalistic society, either we like it or not. It depends from where we are from and what we have encountered uh, throughout uh, the years of our lives. But each system has a certain values, certain patterns of behavior that are accepted, uh, certain mindset and goals that define our happiness. As uh, Christine Lee said that we have associated that we will be happy when we will have money. And how we will have money, we will have it when we make the right choices. So automatically, we are responsible for our own uh, future by making the right choices. And somehow this makes us more stressed uh, like whenever you are in the right university, did you get good grades? Will this job help you? Um, will this relationship will be the best for you? And so on and so on. It, it, we can like make it bigger, but if you see it as a, uh, as a whole, we have put a lot of emphasis of having in order to be happy. As I said, if I will have money, then I will be happy. If I have this job, then I will be happy. We tend to procrastinate and we do conditioning on our terms of experiencing hap happiness from external things. We are waiting for happiness or love or whatever we, we feel from external parts to make us feel good. Or we are saying, I want to find the best partner to bring happiness in my life. But you're not happy by yourself. Have somebody else can bring that to you so and also we have seen that uh, the, uh, the goal is to be competitive to be the best i deserve the best regardless who i am and this is personally something that frustrates me hearing people yes i deserve the best in my life and you just treat everybody in a very crappy way it's like why you deserve the best and not somebody else deserve the best because this is the narrative is the individual in the middle that is not connected with all the others and is all above the individual so the individual has the uh the responsibility to do the things to choose 
uh, the individual has uh, needs that needs to fulfill, and they are all fulfilled externally, not internally. Now I would like to move on and uh, Mm -hmm. Give me one second because I have an issue with my lovely presentation. Hmm. Okay, you're back. Now I would like to do the same practice, but with some other statements and see how these statements will feel for you. Ready? Close eyes. And I invite you to close your eyes and listen to my voice and the statement and pay attention on how these statements, when you hear them, make you feel. Do you ever say these things to yourself? I am happy now. My failures are my learning points. I deserve better and I will work for it. I appreciate life and what it gives me. I'm not okay today, and that's fine. Having a bad day doesn't mean that I have a bad life. I respect my limits. My failures do not define me. I have trust to myself and to life. I am honest with myself and my feelings. I give myself time to heal. I will do what feels right for me. When you feel comfortable, please uh, open your eyes. Welcome back. And I would like again to hear how this felt for you and if it was something different from the statements before. I will choose uh, Christina Lees, as you shared also before, maybe. Mm, out of all those, I think I've said I am happy now. And um, but the, this can be related to just one uh, emotion at the time, just uh, feeling happiness, maybe not like. Uh, happy about all, all all of my life or something at that point but just some something that made me happy maybe this uh, has come up on that situation mm, i don't even know what to say <laughs> thank you very much for sharing it and as i know that you appreciate the little moments <laughs> already uh, it happens that i know that uh i would say yes it, it's quite important to actually allow yourself to be happy we, because we have related happiness sometimes with guilt that with all these bad things that are happening around you you don't you should not feel happy because there is so much you know sadness around the second thing is that uh, to, to be able to recognize that you feel happiness in a specific moment or to acknowledge that you feel a specific feeling in a specific moment is a quite big achievement as, as we were discussing before with Greta that we feel that you know time is passing and we don't understand what we feel or when we feel it and how it was even it's positive or negative um i saw also sonia turned on her camera so i will just jump and ask would you like to share something i just forgot to switch it off uh, switch it on earlier but well yes i could uh, very much i picked three actually which are very relevant um 
this would be about I, I deserve better and will work for it. That is very much me. And also the honesty with own feelings. And the last one, uh, doing the, what feels uh, right to me. And it somehow is motivated uh, when for some reason there is a lot of toxic positivity also around not allowing negative feelings and blaming for negative feelings. So it, of course, one shouldn't be miserable or anything like this, but one should be oneself as well. And this is pretty important to stay, stay sane as well. Thank you very much for sharing this. Uh, I don't know from where to start. I wish I will remember everything. So that I do what feels right for me. I will start. Yeah. Uh, which is very important in the sense that the, the, the contrary that we saw in the previous slides was that um, I, I should not do anything, everything is in vain, I cannot change the world. And I have heard this narrative so many times in my life from people telling me, you know, Katrina, you cannot change the world. But I forgot, if I want to do something and people are telling me that, when I go at, uh, to sleep at night, I'm thinking that I have to do it because for me, this feels right. I don't say to destroy somebody else. We don't go to the other side to say that, okay, I will do whatever feels right to me. And for me, feels right to uh, uh, harm others. It is okay. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about um, if for me it matters, then I will, I will continue doing it, even though you believe that it's in vain. Um, they deserve better and I will work for it. Thanks for sharing it. And I would like to uh, put it again in contrary from the previous slides. Uh, that is, I deserve the best. It's different, the superlative, the best, no matter what it is, but I, I do deserve to have it. Instead of, I deserve better in the position that I am at the moment. And I will, ha will work hard in order to, uh, to, to to achieve it or receive it because uh, the, always the things that we're getting very easy in life we don't pay attention to this for the things that we work hard are those that are matter for us so it's important to remember also that that whatever comes easier maybe we don't like it so much even though we are happy for for having it and about the toxic uh, positivity, I would totally agree with you. It is very important to actively listen how you feel, how the rest are feeling. And it's not that everything is all right. No, sometimes not everything is all right. And we have to see that everything is not all right. Uh, I don't say to just cry all day long because everything is not all right, but to embrace the feelings because we are not having only positive feelings. We have also negative. We should not let the negative uh, overcome the positive, but we should also recognize them. And as I talk so much about feelings and systems and values, you're like how this is related with the environment. Um, before with Greta, we talked about uh, practicing mindfulness and practicing mindfulness through meditation. There are two ways of practicing mindfulness. The one is, as I said, through meditation, and the other is to bring mindfulness to everyday lives. Meditation is a very powerful practice to training our attention and actually to make ourselves present. Present uh, on the time, present at the moment, and present in our sensations, our thoughts, and our feelings. I will move to a very big slide, which you don't have to go through that. I just put it because I would like to share that with you later. So I would like you to have all of this. And it has some main values regarding what it means to be mindful. Mindful means to be present in the moment, to bring the attention back all the time to what you think in specific situations, what you feel and what you sense with your senses. And treat that in a non-judgmental way. Uh, towards yourself, towards your thoughts, as well as the others. I will take here an example from daily life and regarding veganism. I'm not personally vegan. I would love to be, and I'm in the process being, by eating meat to be, uh, to don't eat meat, to reduce my consumption of meat and, and uh, stop eating their products. It's not easy. And uh, I have encountered people who are vegans and they don't try to convince me to be vegan, 
but if I have questions, I can reach out to them and they can help me. And I have the others just blaming me that, you know, you have to be vegan. Is that what we call ecofascism in a way? And it's not only about veganism, it can be about politics, it can be about anything. To have a non-judgmental attitude towards whatever you do and to accept either your pitfalls, your oops, hiccups moments, and also uh, you learn how to forgive yourself and you learn not to quit because you didn't do something correct. We are humans, we're not doing everything well. And of course there will be failures, of course there will be their obstacles and we have to recognize them and embrace them. If you beat up yourself, then you allow others to beat you up towards the process as well. And you do the same to the environment. So to don't have, don't be judgmental, is a way to actually heal yourself and make yourself move forward. And each change uh, needs time. And that means that you have to be patient. You have to celebrate your victories. You have to accept your failures and accept the fact that you cannot totally transform your behavior from day one. Uh, be kind. Treat yourself as you would treat somebody else, a friend of you that is facing a very difficult situation and you will give advice and you say, hey, you know, you can make it. Do the same with yourself. Uh, you don't have to beat up all the time about what you do. And have a beginner mindset. That means be able to be open to try new things to start like a child that goes to school and ask what is that and what is the other and how we can do this and how we can do the other because this way we also build connections and we don't have any more decided you i know everything and i am the expert nobody became expert in one day and nobody is expert i always like to refer in my presentations to ancient greek quotes and it's one of them that that socrates was saying that i know that i know nothing so you have to start from that to be able to be open and to appreciate what life brings you. To trust your own basic wisdom and intuition. I don't say just follow your feelings or whatever your heart says or your gut says, because in the, in the entrepreneurship world, uh, either social or total entrepreneurship, what you hear is like, trust your gut. I will not totally agree with that. Trust when you feel that you feel okay. If it's something that doesn't feel okay, your body has always signals to tell you. If you do something and you know that it's wrong, maybe you present that it is not to the others, but inside yourself, you always know what it is right or not. Non-striving attitude. That's basically what uh, Sonia discussed also before. Don't strive for the ideal situation, the best that I will deserve. But how is the situation now? Um, be present and accept how it is. I cannot change the climate change in one day. I cannot clean all the Pacific garbage island and I cannot, um, I, I cannot protect the soil all over the world. I cannot. I have to accept that. The next step is what I can do with the resources that I have uh, to make the situation better and for the things that matter for me, to spread awareness or take action. The things that I was saying that uh, I can go to sleep and they're still inside me that I have to take action. You have to find out what it is for you. It doesn't have to do only with the environment. It can be general, of course. Uh, and if a situation is bad today, it doesn't mean that it will be forever bad. Yes, at the moment it is like this, but it will not be always like this. And what I can do to don't make it be always in the same way. Letting go, letting go things, letting go emotions, letting go control, and letting go uh, ideas that don't fit you anymore. Notice how you feel when you're letting go. We have some participants today from the minimalism challenge that we are running uh, during the green month. And uh, maybe you can share later on how is this feeling of letting go for yourself? And sometimes to letting go also control is a way, it, it feels weird in the beginning, but also is a great way to see how the, 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 you, you're not, as I was saying at the beginning, the individual that was the core, you are not the core of everything. That there are other 
things happening around you and you have to let them be and the same thing is happening in nature is not the human that is the uh, the chief let's say of the whole nature the king or the queen uh, of the whole nature there are things that are there and we have to accept that they are there and they have some control and the last one is commitment commitment as it is a practice that needs training as you train yourself to write when you were a child or to read or you train your puppy to sit it needs a commitment you cannot have big results from day one however it's worth the try and as my time is uh, ending soon uh, i will uh, focus on the five R's, maybe you have heard them, is a slide that I love to use about the waste hierarchy. The five R's of sustainability. Refuse, reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. Again, it will go back to the values. These five uh, R's tell us something. Tell us that you have to do something. You do waste, so you have to take the responsibility and take action. As you see, there are the most favored options and the least favored. So the best is to refuse, then to minimize and to reduce, to reuse, to recycle, and then to dispose, right? And the companies, the system, the capitalism, use whatever you want, uh, tends, uh, puts you in a situation that you have to take action for this, which is, again, one order that you take from something external, to act for something that will potentially help you all the future generations. Is it like this? How you expect a person to change the behavior when doesn't see a personal benefit throughout this? So what if we change the narrative of the five R's and we use a narrative more positive for ourselves and more positive and relevant to the experience that we have and the, um, the, the skills that we are lacking. And I will go fastly through that. So instead of saying reuse, why we're not saying, uh, sorry, refuse, why we're not saying learn how to say no or say yes to what matters for you the most and start asking questions to yourself about the things, oops, this, sorry, for the things that you have, the, th the times that you're saying you can say no, or the times that you can say yes, to what you say yes. Is this yes comes from inside you and makes you feel comfortable, or it comes from outside and is a way to please others and please other needs and not your own. This, in order to train, let's say, these uh, skills, as I said in the beginning, there are two, uh, two main elements that interact, you and the environment. You have a part of environment in, uh, in yourself and the environment has part of you in itself. So if you're very good regarding your relation with yourself, then you can just say refuse and for instance, do something good for the environment or vice versa. If you don't, uh, you haven't cultivated the, um, the skill to say no, then by actually embrace and put in your life more sustainable um, practices, then you can start having that skill. I have done the same for each and every uh, R, uh, but now I will just say how we can change the narrative. And then if you have more examples, feel free to share and tell us your experiences. So instead of saying reusing, I would say be creative. Be creative of what you have and see how you can find uh, the things that you need and the things that you already have. Success, uh, I put a quote there, success in life is when all what you really want is what you really need and to have them and to find out how I can alterate that to continue being useful, how I can find something that is not brand new and that I can bring life to it. The next one is reduce, find happiness in simplicity. We have associated accumulation of goods, accumulation of people, accumulation of relationships, likes, mm, comments, hearts, and so on with uh, happiness. 
What about if we reduce what we have? Can we find happiness and simplicity? How we can find happiness and simplicity? Many times what we are doing with our possessions is that they are actually a physical manifestation of our internal clutter. We are inside us, that we are, we are um, in a um, confusing situation with ourselves within us. And our possession is actually a reflection with this. Should we just come a little bit more inside and see how we can reduce that? And sometimes we cannot... Uh, focus and find directly the source of the problem, but our material material clutter around us can give us some hints. And how do we feel when we actually let that go? Recycle. Uh, instead of saying recycle, I would say sort, reprocess, and convert what you have into something new. In a recycling world, because bin free is related with recycling quite a lot, so I had to start a little bit forward towards that topic, is that you have different materials and different materials have a different behavior. For instance, in order to recycle plastic, you have to add some raw product there, raw granules. Uh, if you recycle glass or metal, they, they have 100% recycling rate in a sense that you take, you put glass inside, you will take in glass. You put metal, you take metal. How we can actually put that in the way that we are thinking in our relationship and our relationships uh, with ourselves? Can we find alternatives that are more productive for us? Can we sort in our mind our thoughts and find out it, be easy, find them easier out and come easier into conclusions. Can we build up a process that actually can help us start from point A to point B without having troubles within? And if we cannot do that, can we sort our waste at home? If we sort our waste at home, you start uh, having one discipline and understand what fits where. And in the long term, this actually can help you to put this pattern of thought also in your mind and in your daily life. And the last one, and my favorite one, is the rotting. Create life from decade, from, de from decay. So basically something that is uh, considered as a waste, something is considered that is not any more used, something that smells bad, something that molds and something that is dirty, actually maybe is the best dirt that you can have in order to grow. Because uh, compost is actually the fertilizer that we're using in our fields. And from that is produced all the food that we have. So can we take our rotten parts inside ourselves and find out how to create life, how to create something beautiful out of this? Um, I have put also something inside uh, that slide, one quote saying, don't take criticism from people that you will never go for advice. Uh, criticism is something that for me, it stinks. <laughs> it smells very bad. It hurts very much. And uh, it's something that sometimes I cannot find my balance with that. But while I'm thinking that, who is actually saying? these things? Is it the person that I actually trust? Is it the person that I actually know or knows me? And is that comment something useful for me or not? Can I take that and put it in my compost and create some life out of this? Or it will actually contaminate what I have created there? So that's all from my side. So I would like to make also a gift for you and a, a gift for you that you can do for yourself. I would like you to take a glass jar for the following three months. Write with a marker, appreciation jar. Decorate it as you like. Write your name, make it personal. And write the date that you will open it on top or whatever you want. I mostly do it on top. So if you start it today, then after three months, it will be 22nd of July, 2021. And until that day, do not open that jar. And you will ask me, okay, what is an empty jar? No. Every day, uh, I would suggest by the end of the day, write three things that you appreciate for yourself for that day. I appreciate that, blah, 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 blah. 
I appreciate myself, blah, 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 blah. Three of them with a date. Make a small paper. I did I say write in a paper? I don't remember. Anyway, write into a paper, fold it, and put it inside the jar. And do not open the jar. Do that practice for three months. If you can commit for three months, do it for three months. I know people that they cannot commit the first time for three months and do it for one, but I would totally suggest to do it for three. And after, find some time being with yourself, open the jar and read one and each of these. And I will not tell you how you should feel. I would let it on you. And please write to me and tell me how you felt and what was the result after three months. And somewhere here, I stopped my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to hear some thoughts that you might have after that presentation. About the happiness before, uh, I really like that uh, Sonia brought out uh, toxic positivity and uh, what I meant by not maybe feeling happy about the whole life of uh, mine, I meant that uh, it's maybe more important to just uh, feel peaceful and uh, just appreciate those little happy moments that you don't have to be happy like all the time. Thank you very much, Christina Lise. And I think, yes, it's, it is much, much more clear in, in that sense that you cannot actually be happy all the time. And when I hear people that are happy all the time, I'm like, hmm, are you really happy all the time? Um, and I have waited a lot of the time from the next speakers, but I want them all to arrive nicely here. So thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to move to our next uh, panelists and starting with uh, Paris, I suppose. And uh, the hello, welcome. Hello, hello, hello from Greece. Hi, hi. Hello, how are you? We're very happy that you're here and let me say some opening words for you and all your team there because it's not only you today with us. Yeah. So <laughs> Paris has started something in Greece many, many years ago, I could say, but let's say the last decade mostly. Something that brings positivity and brings something nice to people without all the stereotypes of you know, the, the happy one, the good one, the successful one, and all these things. He created a dance class, uh, dance fitness uh, class called Paruba, that we're going to dance next uh, Wednesday as well with, uh, with Zina, which is, he is also today with us. And um, he had, uh, besides bringing the, Balkan music into the fitness class and the Greek music into the fitness class, he has paid more attention to the people with disabilities. And he is dancing with them, uh, Barumba, and it's great to see. We will see also some videos later on. And personally, this speaks quite a lot to my heart because I was working, and the reason that I came in Estonia was actually to work with people with disabilities. And it was uh, our first connection point when I contacted him. And I was very happy to see that someone sees uh, this beauty, that I, I'm not the only one who sees beauty to these children. There are more people. And Faris is one of them. So I'm very happy that he's here with us today. And uh, I will not please your ears anymore. And the uh, floor is yours. Perfect. So um, hello to everyone. I am Paris and I am my my real job. It's a nurse. So I am a nurse here in Greece. So in the total of the problem of all the planet. So um, uh, Parumba, it's one class, but I prefer to speak Greek because I speak Greek and Gina doing the translation for you. So, Kalispera. Hi there. <laughs> Good evening from Paris. Um, uh, είμαστε στους 29 βαθμούς. Έχει ζέστη εδώ στην Ελλάδα. It's hot in uh, Greece, so you can imagine how we feel. 
Ε, πάρα πολλοί από άλλε χώρε, Ιταλία ή οποιασδήποτε χώρε, μιλάνε τη γλώσσα του και γίνεται το translate. Άρα προτιμώ να μιλήσω και εγώ ελληνικά στη γλώσσα μου. I enjoy that Gina right now is translating everything I say in my language. <laughs> και. Θέλω να σας καλωσορίσω, θέλω να σας πω ότι δεν έχω έρθει ποτέ στην Εστονία και έχω γυρίσει πολλά μέρη του κόσμου. I have never been in Estonia, although that, however I have traveled a lot around the world. Και θέλω να παρακολουθήσουμε μαζί το βίντεο, γιατί α, δεν είμαι ένας άνθρωπος ο οποίος χορεύει μόνο. You are going to watch the video later and you can see that I am not a person that you, everybody knows that I dance. I don't dance only. I do a lot of things and I work with a lot of people. Δεν μ' αρέσει η περιθωριοποίηση των γυναικών που έχουν πολλά κιλά. I don't like discrimination, especially of women that they have extra weight. Δεν μ' αρέσει η περιθωριοποίηση των ανθρώπων που είναι σε μεγάλη ηλικία. I don't like when, uh, they, when people say that, oh, okay, this is an old man, he can old woman, he cannot dance. Και δεν μ' αρέσει οτιδήποτε ε, περιθωριοποιεί, περιθωριοποιεί τους ανθρώπους για να μην κάνουν πράγματα που αγαπάνε. I hate discrimination and when people uh, cannot accept that anyone can do everything. Ε, χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ που βλέπω σε αυτό το πάνελ ε, και διάφορες ηλικίε, αλλά και διάφορα μεγέθη σώματος. I am glad to see that everyone here is different uh, according the age, the weight, everything. Και η αλήθεια είναι το ότι θα χαρώ πάρα πολύ γιατί μιλώντας με την Κατερίνα με την Εστονία. Um, I have um, I have a talk with uh, Κατερίνα and I am glad to say ε, ότι θα έρθω σίγουρα στην Εστονία από κοντά κάποια στιγμή να σας δω. That I'm gonna come to Estonia for sure και να βοηθήσουμε οποιοδήποτε όλη μας η ομάδα, οποιοδήποτε παιδί έχει πρόβλημα οικονομικό, γιατί αυτό κάνουμε και εδώ στην Ελλάδα όλη η ομάδα. We organize charity events uh, for every person, every kid that has disabilities or any problem, uh, financial problems, and we organize events. So I would like to come to Estonia and have an event like this, a charity event, to dance all people and help people That, in, that are in need. Σίγουρα πιστεύετε ότι οι Έλληνε και έχετε ακούσει ότι είναι, μπορεί να είναι και τεμπέληδε και μπορεί να μην έχουν και πολλά λεφτά. You may hear that Greek people are lazy or poor guys, but it's not. They are not. Το μόνο σίγουρο είναι ότι θέλουμε πάντα να μπαίνουμε στη διαδικασία να βοηθάμε, γιατί είναι στην κουλτούρα μα να ακουμπάμε πάντα του αδύναμου. We love uh, help people, we love make them uh, feel better, feel happy. Uh, we are people like this. Και τελειώνοντας, ξέροντας ότι η χώρα σας είστε λίγο πιο κλειστή από εμάς. We know that we may have different cultures, for example, people from Estonia are different from the Greek people that we all know. Αλλά πιστέψτε με ότι η μουσική και ο χορός μπορεί να μας κάνει ένα. Δεν But παίζουν ρόλοι εθνικότητες. But I believe that music can connect us, can make us uh, feel the same and we can all dance together without having these differences of Katerina, cultures. Katerina, thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, it's really nice to see you and let's go to see the video. What do you think? Oh, let's uh, have Artemis and Christina ah, first. Okay. Uh, I have to say something that uh, next week I'm Gina. Uh, first of all, from Cyprus, I am mega. I am mega instructor. Uh, I I can't wait for the event next week. And I have to say that we all work together. So uh, on a Wednesday, next Wednesday. We are going to be around 15 instructors dancing with you. So we are going to be like a party. Don't worry about the moves and the steps and all, the, all these things because we are going to have fun and uh, enjoy our time together. We have Artemis, uh, she's a Barumba instructor for, for me. We, had, we have fun like a Greek wedding, I think. 
Yes, and a festival. It's, you know, the, the, uh, the, the class that will be like a Greek wedding. Put on the YouTube Greek wedding and maybe you can see what happened on the next week. Huh? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Paris, can you see Manuela? Manuela is laughing. I, I think she's Greek. Where That's why Manuela? she's laughing. Yes, hello. <laughs> Hi, Manuela. Yeah. Exactly, I totally relate. I'm not married, but because uh, I'm also marry. from Greece, I got uh, very related mm. to the big fat Greek do you, weddings. <laughs> do, you, do you have a boyfriend, Manuela? Uh, no, I don't. We can not find anymore. You. We can find you. Where are you from, Manuela? Thank you. Right now? I am from Samos. Samos, Samos Island. Perfect. Yeah, if you know it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I have been there and I have been, I have no music like an event. I, uh, I was I, I have event before mm -hmm. or two years ago. In Samos? Yes, on Vathi. They're very nice to meet you. It's great to meet you all. Perfect, perfect. Let's travel to Mykonos. Hello everyone. Hello there. Yes, Katerina. Yes, Manuela. So I'm Artemis. I live in Mykonos uh, 10 years. I have two kids, a wonderful family. And I chose uh, to be a Paruba, an instructor Paruba here because in winter is the uh, end of season and we are very lonely, feel very lonely here. So I chose that to have fun, me and other women like me, uh, housewives and mothers. Um, that's all. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I can't wait to see you in the next uh, our event. Uh, that's for me. Nice to meet you again. Gina, Let's you. move to Christine now, who is Barumba instructor from Cyprus as well. Hi to everyone. Um, I'm also a Barumba instructor from Cyprus, as Gina said. I would like to thank you for your invitation to have us with you today. And let's say just a few things regarding Barumba and general in dance. So dancing boosts our physical and mental health. If you're struggling with depression, consider trying a dance as a form of therapy, any kind of dance. Should never, you should, but you should never replace seeking out help from a professional. It can be one tool to use to stay, to stay healthy. A formal dance class, exercise class, or even alone in your room could be enough to make the difference. Looking for motivated to get started. Dancing is a beneficial for both physical and mental health that can be used for stress reduction, disease prevention, and mood management. Dancing causes your body to release endorphins. Endorphins are physical, chemical, brain, um, sorry, endorphins causes your brain to naturally, as, um, sorry, Give me a second here. Okay. Endorphins will make, um, one minute, I'm stuck. Endorphins are chemicals in the brain that act as a natural painkiller. I've got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go from there. Dance like other art forms has been shown to contribute to element of stress and development of a good mood. So by dancing, barumba, or any other kind of dance, according to all modern studies, is one of the most um, effective methods for physical and um, physical way to reduce your stress. So I'll give you five advantages of dancing, giving people the ability to express their emotions, two, stress relief, three, increase physical fitness, four, improve confidence and self-estimate, five, lift your mood. So hopefully we'll see you in our next Barumba dance event. Thank you. Really, thank you. I have to um, uh, mention that uh, Christine is a life coach as well. And, and she gives us all the team a great lesson every week. So we are very glad uh, to have her in our team. Uh, Katerina, this is for, from us, from our oh. team. 
thank you very much for sharing and being here. And it's a great pleasure to see you again. I have to say that the first meeting I did with them, they did it exactly as a Greek wedding. So they were all the instructors from all over Greece. I was just talking with Paris on the phone. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's meet in the next meeting. And I was expecting, okay, meet Paris, uh, maybe one more person, Gina, I didn't expect. And it was all of them all over Greece talking to me. I was like, oh my God, it felt so much like home. So, and uh, thanks for the surprise as well for speaking in Greek. Uh, I didn't expect it or I didn't remember it. And I was like, oh my God, I will just drop. <laughs> it's been a long time. And uh, it's great to basically do what you do and for me here is important because I haven't I, I don't listen to Greek music here I mean I cannot go to a club okay I cannot go because of corona but besides that also it's very difficult to go to places and listen to Greek music and because I'm listening quite a lot it, it was it's an opportunity let's say to actually dance the music I want I listen dance the music that speaks in my body and active and share also that with other people because I can also like find a DJ and say you know play that song and just being me dancing by myself <laughs> so it doesn't make any so much sense and connectedness but bring that all next Wednesday and dance all together and have 15 instructors I think we will definitely find a group for Manuela <laughs> or uh, just make the the festive from a wedding and thank you so so much for being here so i'm gonna share the video you have made for us uh, give me one second technical stuff mm -hmm. here we are and i have to share my sound if you don't hear just unmute yourself and tell me and i will put that in a big screen let's go and enjoy them
that's the video. Uh, thank you again very much for sharing that. If you say I'm dropping, I'm sorry for that, but that topic is always fixed to my heart. And due to Corona, I cannot visit the people I was uh, taking care of for almost two years of my life. So let's hope the situation will get better. And we hope to see you all on the 28th as well. Yes. Thank you all. Uh, see you. <laughs> How, how how you say bye bye thank you in your language mrs sonia <laughs> no mrs sonia how you say i'm not i'm not from estonia oh you're not from estonia <laughs> who is from estonia i think christina Lees can help us with that or kristen i saw kristen first so go kristen uh, they say, um, hey, Adaga. <gasps> it's a little bit difficult, Mrs. Rosemary. Uh, hey, hey. Hey, Adaga. Hey, Adaga. Mm -hmm. Is that right, uh, Christine? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Oh, good. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so it's a lovely, la a lovely language to learn. And um, also, it's nice that you're brightening everyone up with the para rumba. So very good indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So, see you next week. Uh, it was really nice to see you. Thank you, Mrs. Gina. Gina, it's my second hand, my first hand, my head, my everything, Mrs. Gina. And it, she's from Cyprus. She's crazy. And thank you very much, Christine, for the amazing English language, the um, everything. It, it was perfect. So, thank you very much and see you next week. T um, uh, put everything go the furniture you know a little bit and don't put nifiko how we say nifiko right. <laughs> wedding stress yes no no just water a little bit of wine a little bit for kefi and uh, see you next week bye bye thank you very much bye bye thank you bye. thank you thank you very much and I would like to start closing the event by listening from you uh, your impressions from today's event and how you're living today's uh, meeting. What you take with you. I think I have to share the Barumba event with my mother and my mother-in-law because they love Greek music. <laughs> That is great. I think yes. interesting. Go what, time, what time is the event next Wednesday? Is it six? I will send you an invitation after we finish the content. Oh, yeah, that's six um, Estonian time. Yep. Good. I, I'm taking away the, um, the rot, you know, because we're already doing that here in England in uh, recycling the waste, the food and putting it into the garden to uh, encourage new growth. So that's very, very good. And um, I know that it's big time in Estonia for the green movement. So uh, I'm joining the BPW at five o'clock, um, Christina, which is uh, uh, business and professional women who are also doing a big conference uh, about the green issues. So it's a, it's very good. And the innovation uh, to be a green city by 2023, um, Tallinn, is um, excellent. And I think it'll impress the rest of Europe. Let's hope for the best. I think the big uh, investment uh, in uh, making Tallinn a green capital actually will and it has already created like a wave and movement of different sort of activities and thank you very much rosemary for being today with us and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing you next wednesday as well mm. manuela we are a few so i can choose <laughs> yeah no it was uh, i was going to speak anyways uh, i was about to unmute myself <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much for the event. Uh, it was really, really great. And I also look forward for um, for the dancing, um, dancing day, especially if the music will be Greek, because I also missed uh, Greek music a lot. Uh, 
like living in Estonia for five years is a little bit too much for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was really really nice. I really um, I liked the beginning. Um, I would say with the uh, meditation and the discussion about like slowing down our pace of life, like like our brains, the pace of life has gotten so fast that our brains cannot. I feel like my brain cannot keep up with this very fast pace that things are moving. So um, I'm definitely going to keep this uh, from today. I'll try to force myself into slowing down and just relaxing a little bit sometimes. And yeah, it was in general, it was, it was really, really great. Everything was really good. And thank you very much for that. And I really have to start um, pushing myself more into the recycling part. Um, I think I'm not really do. I'm, I'm mostly doing partly, like mostly the glass, all this. But I, I think that I could do better, so I will try to improve in this part also. So yeah, it, it was it was really good. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you for being here, and uh, I will just take one word that you mentioned: the force myself. Again, it is a way, you know, to put more effort and pressure to us. So I would uh, invite you to release this tension and see where you feel more comfortable. Because I had for years this saying that I have to push myself to do things. And whenever I push in the beginning, let's say it can work as a motivation, but later on, because it doesn't come from inside, it's quite difficult. And whenever, like, as they say, goals are for people that don't have enough motivation. When the motivation comes from inside and you know what you're doing, and as you said, you mentioned recycling, is a different journey and you find your points that are more relevant to you and more relevant regarding your thoughts and your needs. And I'm sure you will succeed because uh, I, I see your progress, I track your progress, so I can say that is a total success. And I uh, would um, move to Sonia. Yeah, I had just, uh, I saw the seminar about the Parumba for next week, but just an hour ago, I managed to uh, reserve a vaccine for the same day. So do you think that Corona vaccination and dancing goes good together? <laughs> I'm a bit scared as well, but <laughs> I will try. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but what I can do is... Uh, I think dancing is good against everything, basically. I don't know against Corona. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Like, I would go with a vaccination towards that. But yeah, it's in the I morning. Can... I only don't know how ah. I feel after that. So, but anyway, but uh, anyway, for uh, the seminar again, big thank you also, like for, for the other seminar we are doing together and lots of good uh, thoughts and, of course, our uh, common project of uh, getting rid of of too much clutter in life. Yes, that's a definitely a good idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you can manage and be with us, would be nice. But what I can do is actually the songs, at least to put them in the collaborative uh, Green Month list that we already have. So you can find the songs there and we okay. can. I will invite them in the Zoom party that we will have on the 3rd <laughs> of uh, May so they can show us some more movements. Okay. And Kristen. Yeah, to be really honest, like I am really sad now because it just reminded me of my life before Corona when I would travel a lot and I would go to Greece quite a lot and I have so many friends there and the first year was fine, you know, it was kind of nice to stay put for a while, but now I'm just missing everybody and today really reminded me of that. So, yeah. Uh, but obviously, like, uh, otherwise, it was really nice to take the time out of my day to think about how to be more mindful. So, Okay, then I will ask a second question to you. Um, because you started quite uh, sad, you know, and nostalgic. What is one thing that you will do to improve your mental well-being after today's session? Um... I I think, I mean, the one thing I really do need to do more is to move because this couch that you see me sitting on, uh, I sit on it a lot of the time. And I know I should like move and do stuff and that would really help me feel better in, in all ways. 
So I feel like this was another push that I really, really have to do it now. Looking forward to see pictures from outside, then, <laughs> from you outside. And uh, I would like to close that with a big thank you to all of you for being here from the beginning until the end and to engage, share your thoughts, your feelings, your worries, your fears, or your positive thoughts and to spread a little bit more positivity and nurture ourselves a little bit more. I share in the chat uh, my favorite form, the, the sugar treats form, uh, a way to nurture ourselves and the others. So through this form, you can send uh, positive notes to whoever you want to, uh, during the grid month, uh, your fellow participants, the organizers, the panelists, uh, whoever you have to say something good for, to appreciate a moment, to appreciate an input, to appreciate just the presence of a person being with you uh, these days. And you can do it either anonymously, either by revealing your identity. It's up to you. And you can do that until the 3rd of May. So take your time, spread some happiness and nurture not only yourself, but also the others. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Katerina. Ciao. Thank you so much. <laughs>